Polish Commission report on the 2154M April 10, 2010 crash. Comparing results of computer simulations with the factual state of debris on the wreckage field. The American National Institute of Aviation Research, NIAR, and the Polish Military University of Technology, VAT, conducted computer studies aiming to simulate the impacts of the 2154M airplane into the ground according to the initial conditions in the configuration assumed in the Russian Mach and Polish Miller's final reports, which were released in 2011. These studies were designed to produce simulated debris fields that would be compared to the factual debris field for verification purposes. The development of a numerical model of the aircraft requires a reverse engineering approach. This approach included many geometric measurements of individual structural components of the twin 2154M airplane, experimental characterization of materials used for those components, building a CAD model of the entire airplane, and converting this model into a finite element model for LSDINA analysis. The entire FE model consisted of 33 million elements, including a large number of 1D elements used for connections such as rivets and screws. A close-up of the center wing shows the structural accuracy of this model. The simulation can be considered an accurate computer representation of the crash event. Results can be used to examine the validity of the assumed initial conditions by comparing the results of the simulation with the factual state of destruction. The initial conditions of the simulations are as follows. Aircraft is rotated around its axis approximately minus 150 degrees, impacts into the soft and wet soil with a horizontal speed about 76 meters per second and a vertical speed towards the ground of about 18 meters per second. Overlaying the results over the satellite image of the main debris field with a 5 meter grid, the visual representation of the destruction of the 80 ton airplane can be observed in the simulation for the duration of one second from the moment of contact with the ground. NIAR ended the computer simulation at 1,075 milliseconds. At this time, all parts of the aircraft are still in the process of moving over the surface of the ground with a speed of 20 to 50 meters per second, decelerating due to friction. In the next part of the presentation, we focus on large fragments of the aircraft and compare simulation debris to factual debris. In each case, fundamental discrepancies prove that the actual destruction of the airplane was not caused by the impact into the ground of the entire airplane in the configuration and with the initial conditions assumed by Mack and Miller's reports. First, we will examine the passenger section of the fuselage. The computer simulation shows the roof collapsing into the interior of the fuselage. However, the factual damage of this section of the airplane shows the roof opening outward. Analysis shows that the fuselage roof fractured along the row of rivets which connects the stringer with the skin of the aircraft. This was caused by circumferential principal stress generated by large internal pressure. Furthermore, the fuselage roof fracture had to take place in the air prior to the impact with the ground so that the ground would not impede the opening of the roof. Next, we will examine the pressure bulkhead of the airplane. In the computer simulation, the tail part of the plane broke off from the passenger part of the fuselage, but the pressure bulkhead remained connected to the passenger part. We can see that the bulkhead is damaged only near the ground and it moves forward together with the passenger part of the fuselage sliding on the ground. In reality, the pressure bulkhead remained connected to the tail part. This demonstrates that the internal pressure in the fuselage not only tore apart the roof, but also sheared off all rivets with the bulkhead and exerted an aft pointing force on the tail with the engines. In this way, the progressive kinetic energy of the heavy engine mass was reduced by this force. The tail part together with the engines is the heaviest fragment of the 2154M plane. According to the laws of physics, such a massive part should travel the farthest on the ground in the main field of debris due to the law of momentum. 
The reality that this large mass stopped at the beginning of the main field of debris is the outcome of rapid impulse in the aft direction. Let's see what happened in the engines in the NIAR simulation. Both engines, right and left, broke away from their pylons and the middle engine freed itself from the mounts inside the tail and partially slid outward. In reality, only the right engine was detached completely from the pylon, and the other two engines stayed together with the tail section in the main field of debris. The mounts of the middle engine were, were not broken, so that this engine remained inside the tail part in its normal position. Now let's examine the destruction of the vertical and horizontal stabilizer. In a computer simulation, the vertical stabilizer was not separated from the tail section, while the horizontal stabilizer completely broke off from the vertical stabilizer. In reality, a significant part of the vertical stabilizer together with the horizontal stabilizer was separated from the aircraft before the Kutuzov road. This detached T-shaped fragment flew towards the southern border of the main field of debris and hit the ground with the tip of the right section of the horizontal stabilizer at the rotated configuration about minus 210 degrees. This fact can be found in the documentation of the MAC report. Thus, in the simulation, the forces on the stabilizers act differently than they did in reality. Let us now discuss the process of destruction of the passenger door from the starboard side. In the simulation, the fuselage together with this door impacted into the ground. As a result of this impact, a large crater in the soft, wet soil has been excavated. The door was crushed and twisted due to the interaction with a heavy fuselage sliding on the ground above the door. Due to the rapid sliding movement of the fuselage on the ground, the door has no chance to be driven perpendicularly into the ground. Instead, the fuselage moved faster from the door, which eventually was dropped behind, became airborne to land back several dozen meters further away flat on the ground. In reality, the door was driven like a razor blade perpendicularly to the surface, one meter deep into the ground, at the very beginning of the main field of debris. Inside the door structure, the remains of human tissue were found, which had to be squeezed into the door structure cavity before the door was ejected from the airplane. The polymer material from the cabin side door cover had visible signs of high exposure, temperature exposure. The actual deformations of the door structure are also completely different than the deformations obtained in this computer simulation. Another NIAR study was dedicated to the analysis of driving the passenger door into the ground in such a way that the door is buried the same way as in reality, and the resulting deformation and damage is similar to that observed in reality. The results concluded that the necessary condition to reach this goal is a minimum vertical speed before impact with the ground about 125 meters per second, while the horizontal speed needs to be smaller than 30 meters per second. The only way to obtain the necessary conditions for the door to be injected perpendicularly into the ground is for the door to be violently ejected by high internal pressure within the fuselage while the fuselage is still in the air. The position of the fuselage must be oriented with the left wing pointing into the ground and the cockpit pointing slightly down. In this configuration, the door launch speed vector was directed to the ground and backwards, which resulted in an increase of the vertical speed from 18 meters per second to over 125 meters per second and a decrease of the horizontal speed from 76 meters per second to below 30 meters per second. To assess the importance of vertical speed of the crashing airplane into the ground, VAT performed impact simulations for the entire aircraft similar to the NIAR simulation, but assuming the initial vertical speed of 12 meters per second according to the vertical speed recorded in the black box just before the loss of power. The vertical initial speed in the NIAR simulation was assumed to be almost 18 meters per second. The comparison of VAT and NIAR simulations has shown that a lower vertical speed increases the survivability rate of passengers, especially those seating in the rear part of the fuselage. 
The results of the NIAR simulation of the airplane impacting the ground, even at a very high vertical speed, do not agree with the actual state of the wreckage of the airplane and the scattering of remains of the victims on the main field of debris. In fact, tens of thousands of fragments of the fuselage debris and human remains were scattered over a width of up to five times that of the fuselage diameter. In addition, heavy parts of the aircraft, such as the engines and tail part marked with numbers 62 and 55, stopped moving at the beginning of the wreckage field, while the lighter parts of the fuselage landed about 100 meters away, as can be seen on the situation map from the MAC report. If we include visualizations of fragments found underground by Polish archaeologists, we see the actual degree of fragmentation of the airplane. The airplane system must contain enough energy to break off and deform into so many fragments. The impact of the airplane into the ground would not achieve the degree of fragmentation of the aircraft that is observed in Smolensk. Explosions provide the additional source of energy needed to obtain such a degree of fragmentation as we observed in the wreckage site in Smolensk. The dispersion of all fragments on the ground is presented on a map of the actual state of damage for this airplane in the form of debris, victim fragmentations, and damage to the trees and traces on the ground, which allowed us to discover the true nature of the disintegration of this aircraft. Conclusions the assumptions adopted in Miller's report used in the NIAR and VAT simulations gave results that do not correspond with the actual state of the evidence found in the field of debris in Smolensk. The left wing was torn apart as a result of an explosion about 100 meters before the so-called Baldwin's Birch. A significant part of the vertical stabilizer together with the horizontal stabilizer was torn off before the Kutuzov Road. The pressure bulkhead rivets were sheared off from the passenger part when the roof of the fuselage was fractured by high pressure stresses while in the air. The left passenger door number 823 was expelled from the fuselage while the plane was still above the ground by a high internal pressure which was required to generate necessary velocity vector components to embed this door along with fragments of human tissue one meter deep into the ground. The ballast fuel tank under the third compartment of the center wing was destroyed by a significant explosion. The fuselage along the starboard side was destroyed by a series of small explosions. The passengers and crew of the Tupolev were killed as a result of the explosions. Scientific analysis and results of the experiments on several aspects related to the Smolensk crash were published in the peer-reviewed international journals. Thank you for your attention.